it's frustrating. Like I said, my five dollar wrestlers did a better job performing. Like when you have a crowd that wants to see pro wrestling, and then my five dollar wrestlers like, oh, let's let's perform and let's <laughs> yeah. do stuff for them. Right. And then all the students are like, then, no, let's just yeah. do this. No, the complete exactly. opposite yes. of what people want to see. <laughs> let's just let, yeah, whatever whatever they're asking and dying for. Let's not do that. No. Hey, let's, 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 let's do a tag match. Let's put heat on the biggest guy possible because they won't see that coming. They won't see that coming. That's my favorite. That's my favorite thing. We have a big guy, little guy tag team. They put heat on the big guy, and, and I go, "Why'd you do that? You just beat the little guy because it's easy." Like, no, people saw that coming. We beat up the big guy. Nobody no, will see it's that coming. Wrong. Boy, it's wrong. It's 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 so it, easy. No, because they. It's what they plan. It's what, they do what they think is right, and it ain't right, boy. That's why I was so thankful we, Deion Johnson wrestling freight train. <laughs> and I looked right. Oh I, yeah. I, I had to give him a big hug and, oh, and that's tell so him, good. and I go, thank you, thank you for just doing what you're supposed to that's do. That's exactly right. It's that's like, all. Uh, I've seen people just like fl- get flushed and they don't know how to wrestle them. It's like, right. It, it, it's just you adjust to freight train. You know what I'm saying, yeah. bullet. Most yeah. people would have got in there and get mad because. Uh, they ain't beating freight train up. They're, yeah. uh, or freight train's not. Well, they're trying to do something over. else. Yeah. No, no, exactly. There, there, there's like six things he does. Yeah. Okay? That, that's exactly. You treat Boy. him like wrestling Kevin Nash. No, and no. You wonder why Kevin Nash likes me. <laughs> freight train you. and Kevin Nash <laughs> like wrestling yeah. me. Yes. Not, they're, they're, that is most certainly Jerry not Lawler, an eerie. Jerry Lawler's yeah. asked for you. Goldust yeah, well, asked for you. Bullet. All guys that got six moves except for no. Goldust. <laughs> so. All right, let's get on this. Ladies and gentlemen, welcome to the Daddy Lord. Russell, you're the vibes, you know what time it is, George Howard. We- but I'm fixing to throw <laughs> this. Well, listen, I'm fixing to We've throw already done an hour. We've <laughs> already done an hour, and we're going Fuck, to do another folks, hour. Folks, listen to me. I'm fixing to throw this bottle at wrestlers. Oh, my goodness, Bullet. What a wonderful world it would be if wrestlers did not exist. But anyway, let me. let have me, been trying to tell people for uh, years oh, wrestlers are good people. Bullet. You rescind that comment here publicly. I have lied. <laughs> okay, right off the bat, I have spent my whole life telling people that wrestlers are uh, human, okay, and that we can carry on the conversation, okay? Yeah. We cut our grass like normal people. We get up in the morning. We, well, I was going to say drink coffee, but right now coffee is a very so- a sore subject with me, mm-hmm. okay? So I, all these years that I've told athletic directors, school boards, uh, National Guard Army sergeants that you should give us wrestlers a chance because we are okay I lied. Lied. Wrestlers are not okay. No. Nope. Anything that a wrestler is sur- uh, uh, touches will crumble. B- ban us all. <laughs> ban us from every Go. government facility, every Listen, church, you know high school. I love, I love Vince McMahon because he, he don't even use that word to me. He don't even He's use right. that word. He was right. Vince is right. Lord, and we're going to kill the entertainment business. Yeah. We're not going to kill the wrestling business. We're going to kill the Athletic entertainment commissions business. Athletic commissions ban us all. Oh, yeah. Ban us all. <laughs> they are smart. They're, they're trying to change Louisiana, deregulate it. No, regulate it more. Oh, Keep us out. It. Keep us well, out. Well, listen to me. Uh, welcome to our TV show, folks. As you can tell, uh, we're both a little excited, a little fired up here. Just a both ran a show on. on a Sunday. We both ran a show on a Sunday, which should be a day of rest. <laughs> Which should be and, and, and nice, easy but, little shows. Well, listen, yes, that's what I was gonna say. We did it on a Sunday with affordable pe- buildings, exactly. Bullet and with with a lot of our crew on a peaceful Sunday afternoon. People who tra- we see three days a that's week. That's exactly right. And we, and we spend. We hold them by their hand. That tell them what they need to do. Describe and show them clearly <laughs> the path and the way to go, and then give them an opportunity. Bullet, when that bell rings, they don't do nothing that we teach them. Do you know that? Nothing that we teach them do they do. Uh, but a peaceful Sunday afternoon, we did it for traffic, no traffic. Every Birds are twerping. Boy, everything was peaceful. Absolutely. Till the wrestling, till wrestlers. I saw down. some of our students, uh, like I, every, every, every time they have my training class, I make them do 60 seconds of a, of a beginning of a match. And I tell them the circumstances, and I tell them, don't do this, don't do this, and don't do this. Right. And then I've, I have spent years now <laughs> crafting a beginning of a match or crafting a way that how you start a match that will happen 
any point during a card in any crowd whatsoever. And then what happens? Yes. When they show up on my show. That's right. They do my number one pet peeve. <laughs> no. They do the complete opposite of what I have asked of them and told them not to do time and time again. And then they come to me and they go, I want your feedback. Yes. Yes. I, you know what? You didn't listen to my instructions. Oh. You didn't listen to my guidance or my wisdom. And, None of it. And, and Bullet, that is such a good point because they did the same thing for me up the road is they want my feedback. It's like they come right to me. There's no feedback to give them. I'm you not did the absolute I've time. taught you. No, you exactly. Did the absolute I taught you. Exactly. So why do you want my feedback? You're just asking my, my feedback so you can see have people see that you're asking for feedback. Yes, that's just like that. when you shake your damn hands. Boy. When people ask, like, "Hey, did you see my match? Can you make it?" To me? That's the same thing as making sure you shake everybody's that's hands. That's exactly right, boy. It's all they pomp don't and circumstance. Know. You're just asking all that, that words so and knowledge are just gonna run through your head, and you're not gonna do a <clears> damn bit of it. But that is gospel. And what blows my mind about this, and we're going to uh, 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 discuss this, is we asked, it ain't hard what we asked. That's, that's the thing that I want to just punch myself in the face is what we ask of our students, it ain't hard. It really ain't. Yeah. You would think we'd ask them to go out there and have a five-star match. We don't, oh. Bullet. I, I can't even explain it sometimes how what week after week, day after day, train after training, what we show them, and then when we give them the opportunity and we step back, they don't do it. They didn't do it. I see one freaking headlock at my little my little show. But and I used to tell them, well, guys, if you mess up, you just do it again. But I, I can't say that now because the whole thing's a mess up. But bullet, here is my biggest pet peeve. First of all, I want to give a quick shout out, real quick. Strawberry Festival 2019, beautiful, beautiful time. Bullet, I know uh, rain came in, cut it a little bit short. But Bullet, me uh, and my daughter Abigail, which we all know is getting married in August, uh, Bullet, I asked her to go with me. It mm -hmm. was such a, a memorial, not memorial, that's dead. Yeah, that yeah, was yeah, a yeah. rememberous You time. may be dead and your body doesn't know. Oh, no, no, exactly. So. But Bullet, uh, we left. I wanted her uh, to get over to the house, so we left and throw her in the ring truck, just like when she was a little girl. We got down there to the Strawberry Festival early, real early, before anybody did, and we just hung out all day. And it was just such a great time because I know I saw her post about it. It was real nice. Oh boy, man! Absolutely. Just we just we just and, and I know when the, when the wedding comes and all this kind of stuff. I'm I'm still hoping to to, to see her and to spend time with her. But it was like because uh, they went on the road with me a lot when they were little. But bullet, it was pretty cool. Uh, I had to have it one more time. If it and I know it's going to happen. I, hopefully I, was, again, I, but, I, I hope the, the the I get an invite to the wedding. I hope it works out for me because I have to go there because I have to see. If I'm going to see you cry. Boy. I have I have to know if Listen, you're human, George. I'm telling you. I have to know. I will I, I know all of the other emotions, like <laughs> anger, revenge, greed, <laughs> envy. Like, I know those other things. But happiness and joy, I, I haven't I seen any of that from no, you ever. I don't I, know. I, I just want to be there and but, see that. But, boy, I, thank you for... But I may see those bad emotions <laughs> there, too, at <laughs> the wedding. And then I'll be like, yeah, he's uh, who I thought he but was. But, boy, thank you for mentioning that because I... Boy, I'm I'm worried because I can share it with you, okay? And I ain't got to worry about a lot of people seeing no, it. No, no, no. <laughs> you want to talk private. But, boy, what if I can't? I'm really concerned about that. Did you boy. can't cry at your yes, daughter's wedding? Yes, yes. What if I can't? I will. I know. Because all eyes are going to be on you. <laughs> yeah. I'm buying a ticket. <laughs> what if? Surely I can, don't you think? I, I, Bullet? I mean, is there a book don't you can Don't read ask me or? questions that you want the answer to, all right? It's like coming up to me after a bad match and wanting my critique, <laughs> yeah. right? You want the truth or do you want me yeah, to lie to you? Can you critique me after this wedding, <laughs> Bullet? Uh, did you? But I, I really think I'll be able to, okay? I mean, I know when the emotions I play so. in. And, and, but... I can't treat it like a wrestling show. Like, just say, that was awful. Okay? <laughs> you didn't do anything I taught you. Okay? You didn't do anything I taught you. But I'm really concerned about that. I know i got a few months to work on it, uh, Bullet, and I've just been watching, you know, uh, our students wrestling matches. That's bringing a tear to my eye. <laughs> no, I, that's just funny. Uh, anyway, I, I think I will be able, I think I'll be able to have my uh, composure, but, but I just got to be able, you know, like, uh, Clint Eastwood, like them actors, they can they can cry on cue. Mm -hmm. You see what I'm saying? I don't know if I'll be able to do that. Okay, right. Right. but that's, so that's but I know you got to have it. I mean, it can't be a wedding if Dad ain't don't cry. Don't cry. So I don't know. But the thing is, like, and the thing is too, it, it, the cry's got to come early. 
Because you gotta walk her down the aisle, present her, and then if you don't, and then and once you hand her off, if you don't immediately go to your aisle, I know, wipe a tear away. I know, bullet. I know. You did inside. I know exactly. You did inside. And see, I still ain't got. I, I'm still having a hard time with the whole concept. I give birth to her, and I raise her. I wipe her little boo boos. I put her hair in ponytails. I take her to school from the first to the twelfth grade. Uh, give her advice all through life, and also I can give her away. What a freaking work that is! What, what I what? recommend that you do, do an actor's trick and like put yourself in a situation that would make you cry. If giving away yes. your, your daughter at a wedding doesn't make you cry, yeah. what I would suggest you do is when you're walking your daughter down the aisle and you're handing her away, I want you to envision that time when Paul Jones gave you his gave you oh, that watch, the watch, and then asked for that oh, back. Boy. Go reach there. You go. See oh. right there. You got it right oh, there. Boy. Right there. We oh. got you good. Oh, so when you done. hand your daughter oh. off. Imagine oh, your daughter being that watch that Paul Jones asked back for oh, being the number one oh, baby boy. face. Oh, in boy. Atlantic oh, Rapids. thank you. I knew I was in love with you. Oh, it's, <laughs> it's done now. But, excuse me, folks. Okay. I got it right there. See? Oh, yeah. It's, it's done. But that's, I needed it. Okay. Yeah. I needed something. And now your I'm son in law is Paul Jones. <laughs> <laughs> but I ain't like Hopefully, I, he doesn't I, follow through like Paul Jones. Like, ah, he can have it anyway. Yeah. I don't need it. But listen, I was going to, I ain't lying. I was going to stuff a raw onion like down in here. You know what I'm saying? Mm -hmm. Under the flower. And surely, in that hot building towards the end of the wedding, those fumes mm -hmm. would be. Hit you. <laughs> I'd probably be allergic to onion. My head get this big. But, it, uh, but anyway, that, thank you for that, Bullet. Yeah. So now uh, it's making a little bit more better sense to me because I was really. Man, I was having getting hives, and I was just get freaking out. Cause what if the moment of truth when I'm supposed to, uh, when when it's my time, mm -hmm. when the spotlight's on me, you see what I'm saying? And yes, you know, and boy, and, and I you say, got nothing there. I can hear me just, say, and then it's a dry, and you hear it across the church like, <laughs> like nails across the chalkboard. Boy, I was know? like, what the heck, y'all looking at? Yeah, you hear me? Are you expecting me to cry? Uh, but I, I, I. I I've got to get through it, but I know she's so happy, Bullet, and it's going to be great. And so, anyway, so I took her to the Strawberry Festival, and uh, uh, we had so, just a wonderful time together, Bullet. She got to hang out, and I got a great picture uh, of her and Ricky. You know, people weren't there yet, and her and Ricky Morton sitting up on the side of the ring, mm -hmm. and just uh, the wisdom. I don't know who was giving who wisdom, but just that. It was a cool picture, yeah. Bullet. You know what I'm saying? Just think the year. If, if those two could talk. The years from from the beginning <laughs> to the end, the 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 years uh, in, in between ours. So it was just a great great time. Of course, the rain came. They they called the uh, you know they called man. They shut down the whole park. They made uh, I mean not just the wrestling park, but you know there's worry about lightning and stuff in the yeah. tents. Uh, the bands they they shut everything down. Uh, but we had a, a uh, just a great great time and uh, got to uh, be around Sergeant Slaughter for a little bit. And boy, he's cool. I yeah, mean, he, 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 you know, he, he cool. just gets it, boy. You know yeah. what I'm saying? You can see sometimes with the guys, it's almost like, it. but boy, this was, this was, uh, and I guess I, I would be in a good mood too, boy. Listen to me, I met, uh, and we know him. I, I don't know his name, but you would recognize his face. He, we see him at some of these shows. He, and I didn't know this. He was like the biggest GI Joe collector in the world. And I thought, yeah, right, yeah, right. And I looked over there, and he was having Sergeant Slaughter. Uh, sign all of I mean I'm talking uh, the old lunch boxes the metal mm -hmm. lunch boxes with Sarge on it the board games uh, but so when I went over there and and I kind of whispered in 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 the the agent's ear and I said well what, what's the what what are y'all up to I mean and uh, he he had already spent over six hundred bucks that guy had uh, he, they, and they were still signing and I looked over Sarge I said did you even know you was on all this and he said no I sure didn't. Uh, but he was sure assigned it. But I'm telling you, this guy, and he was happy to do it. He dropped over six hundred dollars right there to the sergeant. I'm very happy for that. But he was getting him every little, you know, the sergeant. Well, I mean, the, you know, <clears throat> Sarge doesn't get enough credit for this because, like, we always like, you know, like the Young Bucks and and Kenny Omega and Cody Rhodes, and they've broken away and they've done their own thing and they're trying to do their own merchandising deals and putting stuff out with Hot Topic, do their own Funkos, do their own, right. you know, action figures and make them themselves and do their own business right. and say, we don't need the, you know, the umbrella well, the of corporate w part the of corporate whatever. part yeah. of WWE yeah. doing that. I, myself as a performer, I can control my likeness in that sense in pro wrestling, which is very much outside the box. But the first guy to really do that was That's Sergeant exactly Slaughter. Right. Sergeant Slaughter 
Because when what? he stepped out and made that deal with G.I. Joe, that's right. Vince kicked him out, but he's like, no, this deal is good for me. It sure is. And benefit me and the run that he got out of just being involved with G.I. Joe. And, and boy, everything, I'm so glad you added that because everything, let me, I'm glad you said that. Everything that he was signing was G.I. Joe. Yeah. There was no, uh, the little bubble bath. There's a bottle of bubble bath. Of yeah. Sergeant yeah, and, and if Joe. he was just it, like, no, I got to stay with Vince. Is a thing here that's right. and send her this umbrella and this corporate elbow and this expansion. And that's a very good point. You'd miss out on this opportunity to go out on your own. And he, but everything, that's a, such a good point, boy. Everything, there was nothing wrestling related no. that this guy wanted signed. It was all G.I. Joe comic books, board games, the video games, and he. it was all G.I. Joe stuff. So Took a chance on himself. He sure did. I love that. I love that. So, anyway, so much going on, boy. Just a quick comment uh, going back real quick before I let you comment on your show is uh, fans, uh, and I know y'all caught us already fired up, but uh, what an opportunity, which we didn't have much when we first started, uh, is we, uh, at our uh, wrestling school here, we tried to give our students a facility to go. Mm -hmm. Before they go to, you know, 500 people, they got an opportunity. I did a birthday party, for instance. There was 15 kids there. A beautiful setup, bullet. Uh, what could go wrong? I mean, seriously, all you got to do, and most of them didn't even get there until the ring was set up, so all you, all you got to do is just go out and have a little match. And here's the thing, Bullet, here's why I'm so mad right now. All our students do is watch wrestling. Yeah. I mean, DVDs, uh, the network, so all they do, you, you would think they would pick something up. I mean, I know there's bad wrestling, but you, you know there's some good stuff out there. So you think, Bullet, that they would pick something up and do yeah, it. Yeah. You, you see what I'm saying? Well, and but, also too, uh, to, to take outside of just the headlocks and, and suplexes and everything else, we've told them what we like, what we don't like. Yes. We've, we've told them for years now, That's exactly hey, right. I don't like this, or this is what I prefer not to do, or uh, don't do this. Now, you can go somewhere else and you can go do it. Yes. That's but exactly right. When we have a show, you're here, that's when we right. have a show, I booked you. I wanted to go on the show. Why are you doing the thing that I hate the most? Yes. Why are That's you doing the that? point? You can do that episode. over here at this person's show here. And you know what? That may be the thing that you're known for. Yeah. That may be the thing that you're known for for your entire career. And, and then if it gets very successful, then I, I will say, you know what? I was wrong. Yeah. Come to my show and do that. That's but right. if I tell you this is not the way to do something and you go ahead and do it, I mean, I've done told that, you how to have my a good, whole point. I have laid it out for you as easy as possible to make me happy, and you did the complete opposite. That's exactly right. And that's why I was so mad at my little birthday party thing because I didn't ask much of them. But, boy, here's what upsets me. We do the hard work. We book the place. We call the talent. We are in charge. We are responsible for what's fixing to happen. But they come on board, Bullet, with none of that in, in sight, none of that... Uh, wanting to be part of it. They come in there wanting to bring what they got to us, and that ain't what I need. Nope. Well, that ain't what I need. And I'm really, tonight at training, uh, uh, there is no excuse, Bullet. Uh, Just figure out what the person who you're wrestling for wants. That's exactly right. Figure out right. what the people who pay tickets uh, to see that, what they that, want That's to exactly see. right, and Bullet. And do that, and not until, do what you want to do. Bullet, and until they learn that, and, and, and I never, I don't know why, and I ain't saying it's just uh, 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 blinded me and I hadn't seen it until this past weekend, but they really think that they're bringing something to us. They're not. They're bringing us a body that I want that body to do what I ask them to do. How hard can it be? Per 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 it perfect example. Last night I, I did stand-up comedy in the, the two most unideal situations at an open mic. First one was a room full of people that were all paying attention to an NBA playoff game. And then the, they were like, all right, we're going to do comedy now and stop watching this game. And we're going to annoy you. And none of you came here for the comedy show. But oh. all you now I have to do comedy at you people. But I have my jokes and I have my things that I'm going to do. But what I got to do is I got to meet you guys in the middle. Yes. What you are... You were not expecting this right. at all. I have to acknowledge you're not expecting this at all. And then I got to bring you to me and pay attention to me. And I did the best I possibly could. Could have done a lot better, but yeah. I need to have more practice in doing so. And then also, that, too, I did right. another set where I went up 20th out of 20 performers. Wow. End of the night. 
Nobody's paying attention. Everyone who wants me to get off stage, and I got to make people want to see an extra minute or two of me because I'm working on something that was a little bit longer than expected. So wow. I had to pull people in some way, somehow, and let them know that I was on this journey with them as well. Please come with me on this journey for the, just a few more minutes, right. and it'll be fine. And I was just taking consideration of the people who were out there as opposed to just running out and doing, well, I plan to do this and I'm only right. doing this. I had to change things around to me have people meet me halfway. I could still do my thing, right. but I got to meet the audience halfway because at the end of the day, they have to like what they just saw. And if you can't do that, you're not a performer. That's exactly right. Then you're just somebody, yeah. then you're just a crazy person. That's right. then, then you're just a crazy person that's sitting there standing on, on the street corner uh, saying whatever you want to say, yeah. talking about the that's, world coming to exactly it. Right. You're a protester, not a performer. That's exactly right. And see, what you just described, I think as tense and as nerve wracking that that may have been, I think that's what our students are missing. I think, and I'm not going to do it, I'm done, but I think they should be thrown out there when it ain't so convenient because we have been making it pretty convenient, Bullet. I mean, honestly, even, uh, for instance, my little racetrack shows the rings up. I just had, I feed them breakfast. I just ask them to show up. And even then, sometimes they don't do what we ask them to do, Bullet. So I don't know. I think uh, everything you just described, as hard as it is and as tense, and, and, and it's almost like, what you're prepared, what what you prepare for, you ain't been able to do. You have to adjust. Yeah, bullet. You gotta, meet the, you gotta meet the audience halfway. You sure do. You have to meet. And I think that's what aggravated me about Sunday. I'm looking out there, at some of these matches, and I'm thinking, okay, I got maybe 20 kids here, uh, 20 kids at a birthday party, and there's a few mom and dads, and and we got cake. And how can this go wrong? You know. And so I'm telling the guys in the back. You don't go out, yeah, you can be a heel, but you can't scare the crap out of the little kids. They don't know you. So some of our guys, some of my students were not in the ring, but they were getting out of the ring, getting in the kids for real. No, that ain't how you get heat. You don't scare the crap out of these kids, bullet. You, you don't take say, away what they want to see. Yes. You don't scare them. You take away like, oh, you, what, what do you guys like? What do you guys like? Well, guess what? You're not going to get that, that. That's exactly right. And then, the, and then the good guy comes up and said, oh, you guys want to see this? I will give this to you. And yes. then that's what it is. Bullet, the perfect example of, of, of I, wished, I wish Tracy Brooks, who I'm in love with, I wish Tracy Brooks would do a seminar on what me and you have just talked about and 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 we've always joked about it when we took her to that youth camp the mm -hmm. big youth rally and and i asked her uh, you know you're a beautiful woman but there's gonna be a lot of kids here and before i could get it out of my mouth she knew not in a bad way or anything she knew okay i'm gonna adjust dial this back yeah exactly and she said i'm gonna adjust to the show oh, no i have no problem with that and she adjusted so perfect she adjusted to the audience mm -hmm. bullet and, and it just but and then no, the but, audience is like, no, we want you back. And then <laughs> yeah. she's just back where she was before. So. That's right. That's right. I forgot about that. She, yeah. she, she switched back and forth. <laughs> oh, yeah. She <laughs> dialed the back, told her to dial the back up, dial the back up. Yeah, so she was missing a beat. I forgot about that. She was able to switch right back, bullet. She's but, like, oh, you want this? Bam, you got it. But bullet. And I was trying, and I, I almost, <laughs> I, I've never canceled a birthday party, but I almost canceled. I never canceled a show, I almost canceled a birthday party. Because, and I hope this, I know it'll make sense to you, but I hope to our viewers. The students were going out trying to have in front of 20 kids. They were trying to have, I can't explain it, bullet. It was like, it was awful. They were trying to have a good match. Nobody, you know what I'm saying? It, I went out. They had a good and, match for themselves, not for the people. No, exactly. Bullet, I went out first thing. Was Nobody's going to get a job from that, that birthday no, party. No, exactly. I, I, that church show. And, and I remember many, many church shows when I'd be wrestling Cedric Alexander. And you would be yelling from your gimmick table, do a flip. And yeah. he would call a spot and he would go do a flip. That and then and then, and he would tell him, I need you to do this, Cedric, and you come off the top <laughs> rope. All of a sudden, you know, Cedric did, came off the top rope, did exactly what you wanted at every birthday party show. And funny, this man is working for the WWE right now. Oh, do, you, do you find a coincidence there That's exactly or not? Right. The guy who's like, oh, this is what the promoter wants. This is what the people want. I'm going to go do that. And, and, all of a sudden, and now he's right. on Raw. That's huh. right. I wonder, I wonder if those <laughs> points... Could possibly be connected. Bullet. I, and, and I almost just left my own show. You know, first thing, my, first thing I did is I stomped the bad guy's toe. And it got the biggest pop. I mean, the silliest, goofiest, but to relate to my audience, they, they just caught right on. No. Okay? And then before that, guys were out there doing arm drags and, and, and all this wrestling stuff. They didn't. 
It was, I, I wanted to shake him. That ain't what this crowd wanted, Bullet. Well, by no means. Going, if they're not doing that arm drag for the wrestler, for, for the for the, that, the wrestler, that's doing the, the arm drag for the for that, the, for that, the that's people exactly right. who are at the show, well, then who are you doing it for? I've seen I've seen so many matches where guys just get in there and they wrestle, and it's like the people were just if, if could be there or not. Yes, if the if you took the crowd out, and they would still do the same thing. Yeah. I mean, they would still do the same match if there was nobody there watching it. And I, that's just unbelievable to me. But anyway, so uh, I survived it. But boy, I'm really going to tighten the screws. I've gave them many, many opportunities. There's some bullet that I, there's some of our students, and, and I can tell them this, that I was using two years ago, okay, at my little shows, trying to gain them experience and stuff like that. And they have not done nothing. And I'm not exaggerating. They have not done one thing in two years as far as gear, they, not, not anything, bullet. To, I'm still getting the same thing. Mm -hmm. It's like no interest on your savings account now. You see what I'm saying? I, I, I'm still getting the same thing two years from now that, that I got two years ago. And that's not fair to me, yeah. Bullet. That's not fair. So I'm not going to do it. They're going to be a big, big lesson tonight. And, 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 and uh, well, I ain't even putting the ball in their court. I took the ball back. We talked about the do same things part. before we got on air. Now we're on air now. And then you're going to say it again. And, and if, if nobody listens to it after that, no, Cut you out. because you think, Bullet, it, it, our training facility, uh, it, I'm waiting for something to kick in with them to where, okay, what is your next step? What do you want out of us, Bullet? Yeah. Surely they just can't uh, uh, want to meet us once or twice a week for the rest of their life. I mean... Some but, of the students I, think, I think, we're, think we're personal trainers. In the sense they, go <laughs> yes. to, they go to a gym. We tell you exactly what to do yes. during this this time. And then they're like, oh, but can you show up to this? And you think we're just going to tell you exactly, but it doesn't make a difference anyways. That, that's exactly right. You're not right. going to listen to any that, stuff. That's that's like, there, there are some people that just show up at that training school as if this is a, a CrossFit class. Yes. And, that, that's exactly and do right. exactly as what we're going to say. And then they have no clue once they get out there. And, and, and bullet. When we're clearly telling them what to do. And, and so much of this, we don't just teach for you viewer, uh, viewers out there. We don't just teach the wrestling part. We really try to educate them a little bit yeah. on uh, how to act, proper conduct, stuff like that. But I'm telling you, when, 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 when you know, the wife of one of the wrestlers or girlfriends or whatever, it, you, you may think, let me tell y'all something this boy. When you rent a facility, okay, or, or they let you use a facility, you have to make it convenient for the one that's letting you have the keys to the place. You gotta meet them halfway. You sure do. And if you make them go over, even though, See, nobody thought nothing was wrong with what happened in my show because nobody came out and said, uh, this is wrong. But it is wrong. Well, they're, they're going to be nice about it. But I know, Bullet, if someone asked me to go fix coffee at 3 o'clock in the afternoon if when there's no a coffee available. For you, yeah. you pay, you don't put people out. No, you don't. And, Bullet, I'm telling you right now, what blowed my mind is, and I'm serious, with a McDonald's across the street and, and, a, and, a, and a donut gimmick right on the corner, there's coffee. You see what I'm saying? You say, George, and everybody was saying, well, George, is just coffee. You're freaking out. No, it ain't. It's the con it's what they had to do to get this cup of coffee. They had to go into the kitchen, which was already cleaned up. The lights are off, okay? Mm -hmm. they, they didn't have to go in that kitchen. Nobody else wanted it. And I was so upset that when we were leaving, after I, we took the ring down, well, I looked down, uh, uh, you know, the, the pastor of the facility is in there uh, dumping, uh, you know, dumping the big, and you had to know five the gallon, eight, five gallon, five gallon, gallon coffee. coffee maker at I mean, church. That's all they have. And because my dad was the building manager. <laughs> I know how much that coffee maker costs, and I know bullet. how much it costs to make the coffee. Uh, but I, just little things like that. I tried to make it convenient. Even sometimes when we go to a high school gym or army, we just tell them, "You just let us know if you need anything." Because uh, you know, a lot of times when we're in charge, uh, the, the the person over the facility will leave. Yeah. And come back later because they feel confident in us, bullet. So anyway, uh, hopefully. Uh, uh, but I, I mean, I, you know, the, the, here's my new attitude: the show is going to get done whether me and you have to work eight times, yeah. bullet, or not. And and, and so they going to learn a big lesson. All of our students, and, and you know, even coming to your five dollar show, you like we said with Dion in there with freight train. Dion knew his job. Bullet. He knew what he was there for. Freight Train's name yeah. was on the marquee. Freight yes. Train's Lucha Libre Festival. Yeah. Who do you make look good? That's that's exactly right, Bullet. Thank you.
Thank but, you. Well, but what, what do we know? What, yeah, what, know what, exactly. what, what do we know at the end of the day? I wish. We're sitting on camera right now. <laughs> I, you got you got a piece of like fabric <laughs> thrown around your neck. I got a Ludwig Borg <laughs> card sticking out of my jacket I'm pocket. I'm wiping tears with some cloth off the floor. You're trying to figure out how to cry. <laughs> I want to pay a ticket to a wedding. Like, I get it. We're but, nobodies. Yeah, and what exactly. we're saying doesn't make any sense, doesn't apply to you. <laughs> I mean, if we were Tom Pritchard and Glenn Jacobs and we had a school, you'd probably listen to us then. <laughs> but, you know, I'm, or if we were working at NXT, yeah, yeah. like, I'm sorry we're not any of those people. Yeah, I know. But you know, boy, in the, in, the, in the circle of life, you would think that they, and it don't work this way, you would think they would listen to us more because nothing's been given to us. Bullet, I, you know we. You can learn a lot from the I, guy at the bottom of the toilet. Well, well, sometimes I talk to Charlie Dream and all them, and even KC about, and especially with you, Bullet, is if I the, the the newer students or the new ones that want in wrestling would have never. At times have changed. They would have never been through and went through what y'all went through, Bullet, and and they they would have never survived. They would have never survived. So anyway, a little bit about the five dollar wrestling. I know Bullet. You we just, well, just, I think we uh, did okay. I mean, uh, like we were even through the stuff with the students, but heck, our five dollar wrestlers—they really oh. came through. One Horn Liger, oh, Wrestling brother. Ranger, um, Aftershock, Jeff Hart, Little Donnie. Oh man! Uh, just uh, Freight Train is always a uh, Burke County boys. Every single one of them. Black Angel. I mean, just every one of those guys did a fantastic job. Jeff Hart, Raider Rock. Uh, of course, if I don't mention Raider Rock, you'll oh, oh, Facebook yeah. message oh, yeah. me uh, 500 times as opposed to the 250 <laughs> times you already messaged me. I done blocked him 12 times and he still weeds through to send yeah. me a message. But they, you did, know? They, just, they, you know, they just did exactly what those people wanted to see and, and deliver that product. Mr. Thunderbolt. Oh. Did real good job. Good We're very him. happy with Mr. Thunderbolt. Mr. Thunderbolt got what $5 Wrestling was about. And he delivered. Oh, I love Out of that. all of our students, he's now, the most happy well, I'm with. Well, let me ask you this now, because uh, my opinion goes either way, which uh, he asked me about this, and I okayed it. Did he have a valet? You did not have a valet. Okay, he asked me, uh, he had an idea about that, and I said, well, you need to clear it, because he wanted to use one of our students as a valet. And I said, well, you, you clear it with bullet first, but I don't know what happened, why, or why not. But I didn't know. He, he, so. But I'll tell you what, he didn't need no valet. I got you. He, he, he knew exactly what to do with those people, I love and that. that's exactly what he did. Good. So I, Very good. And, that, and that's kudos and, to him. And see, I... I I laugh inside sometimes because I can see that part is almost like you, you like you did like me. It's like two different shows. You had the ones doing what they were supposed to do, and then you had some coming here thinking it was going try thinking that they had like you said wrestling for their self, expecting to do like you know Doyle Funk Jr. and Tony Anoki or something mm -hmm. like that. And that ain't what that that ain't what that crowd wanted. Bullet, if, you if, know if, what I'm if you stare at the lineup sheet or if you look out into the crowd and you're not thinking what's going to work with these people, yeah. I don't know yeah. what. Like, then, then, then you're a protester, not that, a performer. That, that's exactly then right. Then you're just telling people what you want to hear into a loud megaphone. This is what uh, I believe. This is what I believe. This is what I want to say. This is what I want to say. You're not performing. Bullet, and it was like at my birthday party show. You know, we got 20 kids out there, and they're already hyped from the cake and the sugar. And before we got started, I saw some of the our students actually over in the corner uh, uh, planning, like, an hour match. I mean, and I'm thinking... Before I yelled at it, I'm thinking, guys, if y'all can't just go out there, I mean, you've wrestled each other a million times. Yeah, okay? come up with and, some and, stuff. Yeah, there's but 20 come up, kids. But come up with stuff that's going to make them happy. But, boy, it was all the same stuff they do if you had them, if they was at, uh, you know, big time wrestling in Spartanburg. I mean, but they, them kids didn't know what the heck they were doing. Did you know what I'm saying? They didn't understand it. Do, they do they just want to see you poke a guy in the eyes. Yeah. Okay? Boogie would have been great there. You yeah. see what I'm saying? But uh, anyway, so much going on, Bullet. I, 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 I thank you for comforting me today. Uh, but, and folks, we'll keep you tuned in. We're going to, our students are going to have to do their part. The record. But the I mean, record. they are. I mean, so. I mean, we've already done it here. We're going to do it later or whatever. But, but speaking of students, speaking of shows. Oh, Bullet. George. Oh, but I didn't know it was the shirt. Both. Oh, but uh, here, here, both. But. There, see. Okay. Oh, you, you got it out of me. Bullet. Do you realize how old that shirt is? I, I can't no even clue. believe I, it. I'm bringing together. it up right now. Bullet, listen to me. When we first, me and Stallion, this is this is even late eightyish. Well, and how this is, thing is in. Look, look but, at the screen printing. It, oh, there's, there's no cracks but, no, in it. Bullet. Listen. This is pristine. Where? 
this had to be wrapped up like a mummy. But listen to me. You know what's so cool about it? I can't even believe the tag's still in it. Tag it is still, it's not frayed. Bullet. This, this shirt, I highly doubt it's been washed more than three times. Bullet. When we first got our men attached and the story behind the PWF, you know, when we came back from Kansas City, okay, I done starved, about lost everything. So Dusty and Jim Crockett shut down Kansas City and bring everybody back, okay? On the way back, this is a true story, Jim Crockett buys Florida championship wrestling. So their idea was the crew is, as you're coming back from Kansas City, hang a right and go to Florida, okay? And do it all over again. For some reason, and it was only a God thing, is George defied uh, uh, command and George went straight. I went to Charlotte, okay? Now the Malkies, Colt Steele, Italian Stallion, DJ Peterson, the whole crew hung that right because Florida is going to be great. Okay? Mm -hmm. Now, me and my little brain, I thought, wait a minute. I can go straight to Charlotte and get beat every week on television and make more money than I'm making as Kansas City Tag Team Champions. Mm -hmm. Okay? Uh, sleeping in my own bed. As little George was just one year old and still. Little George still, already growing up and was smoking oh. <laughs> by the time you got back. You left, he was just uh, born. You which, took off. Which my son. And he came back, he's already like. Which my son still resents to this day. But, so, true story. George goes straight. The whole the whole crew, Kansas City crew, goes to Florida. Bullet. A month, It's and it's the same thing. It may look like Florida, but it's just Kansas City. Stallion calls me, and the territory was so bad. But wrestling had already died. Territory was so bad. Stallion was able to make a little bit of money because he was a baby face. And, but the territory was so bad, they started making the baby faces share their gimmick money, which wasn't much anyway, with the heels because they were starving. Stallion called me one night, and, and as I was laid back, smoking a cigar, and just got beat up by Billy Jack Haynes on uh, Middle Lane Championship Wrestling and made 300 bucks mm -hmm. with, my, with my Nelson Royal cowboy boots on, okay? And little George is down there. That you got that hey, fell out of hey, the back of uh, uh, Rock and Roll's Oh, yes, yeah, and yeah very much. And as I looked down at my son, little George, two-year-old, butt naked, rolling around in uh, $10 bills, you know, <laughs> like a rapper does, okay? And, and, I, and so I picked the phone up, bullet, and... <laughs> And Stan said, I got to come home. He said, what the heck am I going to do? He said, and boy, I, I want everybody to know, at that time, there wasn't a lot of, there was a few little end of outlaw shows. There wasn't a lot of wrestling around here. So I said, I tell you what, Stan, just come back and we'll buy a ring and we'll do our own thing. And at that time, PWF was pro wrestling Florida down there too. He says, you think we can do that? And I said, well, I mean, I, I didn't know who can stop. It can't be as bad. It, it can't be worse than what we're doing. So he comes home. I mean, we go be, pay some mark uh, <laughs> thousands of dollars for th for three letters. Yeah, and... I, I know, bullet. So listen, he comes back. We buy a ring. This is a true story. And so the PWF was born, bullet. And we hit the ground running. We were making we were making some money. But before, when 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 Aerosmith was still traveling in that old van, mm -hmm. we got an idea to do some marketing. Okay, and nobody had done marketing back then. WWE was just getting into it. So, boy, anyway, we found a guy. That's how special that shirt is. And if you can tell, I think he was a screen printer, yeah. or he may have just been like a farmer that tried to do it. And as you can see, what I love about this is it now, of course, you'd have blinking lights and different colors. And the reason there's only black and white, of course, is more money. Exactly. <laughs> but you, you also splurged for the back. Yes, boy. Right two there. screens. Early on, two screens. No expensive so, spare. I think what's so mind-boggling that that exists, boy, is the minimum you could only get was six. Okay? Yeah. And, I mean, they wouldn't let you get no less because I was only going to get two. Yeah. So, the first, well, there's only been one run. <laughs> there's only been one run. Boy, there's only five more of those. That's <laughs> That's all I'm saying. Bullet. I, my question, Bullet, is where was it? Bullet. I mean, that blows my mind. George. Bullet. Because. You know, here's story time. Oh, gosh. So I, the place where I do stand-up comedy at an open mic every Wednesday, Crown Station, They uh, one of the bartenders there, she's, she's an artist. Right. And she decided to have an art show 
and it was uh, themed in professional wrestling. Dang! Uh, but unfortunately, uh, none of those artists know what professional wrestling is. <laughs> some of them kind of did, and I appreciate them, but some of them like made some very uh, poor swings uh, oh, at what yeah. professional oh, wrestling yeah. actually is. Right. Uh, but some people were on point. They had this really nice oil painting uh, with Andre the Giant, and it was beautiful. It was the most wow. beautiful picture, painted picture I've ever seen of Andre the Giant. So it was on my Instagram. Like I, I posted some of the, the stuff that I really liked on Instagram. There was an art piece that was inspired by Jeff Jarrett. So some people like were really wow. into it. Some people really weren't. They had some really great pictures of Hulk Hogan. They had some good Lucha Libre stuff. But there was some other stuff like, eh, that's not really pro wrestling. But there was some other stuff that was very on point. But they also had somebody there from a vintage clothes clothes shop. Oh, well. Wow. I'm and so they proud. had a bunch of Attitude Era t-shirts. And I was just looking through. And there were a lot of, like, stone, like stuff that's at your gimmick table. Yes, yeah. And <laughs> I was just like... And I, like Blue oh, Bloods with duct tape. We, 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 have t- we have t-shirts, like, laying around here that are the equivalent of, of a, what they had laid out. So I'm like, oh, whatever. But then I'm like, well, let's see what they have. I mean, it looked like stuff that you would have... Like, I, I it look, remember when, like... Uh, Stephen Berry was around, and then every outlaw at every uh, wrestling show had all these yeah. Stephen Berry's uh, t-shirts laid out, and, and they'd be charging like twenty bucks for when you can have Stephen Berry's for five bucks, as if we didn't all know that. But like, that's what it kind of looked like. But then I, but then I was just kind of looking through, and I don't know how that caught my eye. Caught caught my eye on the second glance at the table. Wow! And I saw that. And I immediately you see the front or the back. I saw I mean, the, front. the front. I saw, I saw the front, and yeah. I just, and I'm just like, I have to buy this immediately, no oh, matter, no oh, matter what it is. And like I said, I'm, I'm, you know, these shirts are like just kind of rinky dink outlaw. Or something right, like that. right. And do you want to know what I paid for that? You want to guess? Oh boy, I'm scared. I'm scared to say. Yep. <laughs> <laughs> this, this may crush you. <laughs> this may crush you. Cause, cause they, cause I go, how much is this? And and they started giving me this whole spiel, like, oh, this is a super vintage shirt of, a, <laughs> yes. of an independent wrestler. By the name Boy, of and they were starting to go, this is an uh, 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 independent wrestler. Uh, I believe his name is Gorgeous George South. I'm like, and so they're giving me this whole rundown on this shirt. Hey, and I'm calling. And, and, and I'm just like, lady, I I got him in my phone yeah. right now. I can get him on the We're horn. on 300 episodes, lady. Yeah, okay? I gotta tell you. <laughs> I, t- I know where that shirt came from. You gotta tell me <laughs> where that shirt came from. But it may kill you to know. I paid twenty five dollars for that shirt. Oh, bullet! Bless your heart. Bullet. But, but, oh. and you know, but I will say this though. So I buy the shirt. Tell them thank you. Take a picture. Post it online. Let everybody know that I got it. Cause this is this is a steal of a lifetime. Well, unbelievable. I was walking around talking to some people. Met some very nice, nice, nice people. My buddy Mark, who goes a lot of the freight train shows. I talked to him for a little bit. I was just kind of hanging out, and then um, I was just hanging over by that table, and then somebody was going around the table. Like I said, we're getting like right, right. Exactly. Mo- that's what this, I love this, about this most it, it, outlawish no, exactly. t-shirt it, spread, and exactly. then somebody asked for one t-shirt that was by The Rock. I'm like, oh, can I get this? And of course, the person gave the whole spiel. Like, oh, this is a very vintage t-shirt. Yeah. We have a vintage shop just right over here, and and and, and it goes, and this t-shirt right here is one hundred and twenty-five dollars. Holy cow! It's a T-shirt that we got on the floor. Boy, they they Are you they, they 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 picked up a Goldberg T-shirt from WCW, which is the ugliest. So I got that same exact shirt <laughs> in better condition at, at home right now, and they wow. were charging a hundred and twenty-five dollars for a WCW Goldberg T-shirt wow. and claiming how vintage it was. Holy cow, boy! So Go. for the, me to get oh, yeah. this, yes, for twenty-five bucks, it's a you don't no, understand. It's very... This T-shirt is more valuable than that Goldberg oh, 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 T-shirt no, it ever is, is boy, and ever it will is. be. Listen, and you hit the nail on the head. If that was like, if you saw that in Matthew Belks or Roses or Sears uh, Wish Book, you know what I'm saying, Bullet? Mm-hmm. That it wouldn't, it, it wouldn't even have been original. No. But for you to see it in the in the situation that you saw, he was mixing it in. with The Rock, uh, yes. Steve Austin, and then there's Gorgeous George South. Oh, Bullet! Listen, I, I'm serious. As as you were telling me that story, Bullet, I know. Uh, because me and Bullet ran, I mean, me and, me and Sally ran shows for 20 years, Bullet. But, Bullet, but Bullet you, Stallion, same, same thing, thing, same thing, same thing. <laughs> but I'm telling you right now, that shirt is over 30 years old. 
It was the first run. We didn't even know how to order T-shirts. And everybody said, yeah, you big dummy. Now, of course, you just get on your phone oh, now, yeah. and, and order a case of T-shirts. But then, Bullet... Uh, uh, it was a process. Oh, I, that I was always, a big process. I, I, listen, I, I am much older than what people think. I am from the era where you had to get a screen printer. Yes. I, I just found some of my old T-shirts, the old Reflection of Perfection Mr. Elite T-shirts. Wow. I had to get a screen printer. Both sides for me as well, too. Uh, just standard black. <laughs> Uh, you know, I come from an era where I had to mail out VHS tapes to promoters. Right. Like, I come from a different era as well, so I, I know how much work I went into this. Uh, what I love about it is I whoever originally had that really took care of that. I can't believe. Either that or they never boy, wore it. No, that had they, to be they bought it, it and they never no, wore it. No, they had to be it. It, it, it must have meant so it. much to them that they never wore it. But see, when, and then what, that I almost started teary-eyed, but when you posted the picture, I thought... It was just a picture uh, online. Because you know, uh, a lot of yes. Because you know, a lot of times when earlier screen printers to get the ink ready, they would just use a cloth, an old uh, 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 trash cloth, yeah. to get the to get the screen ready yeah. before they went to do the shirt. So I thought you may have just got a practice, uh, uh, sh uh, you know, piece of cloth or something. Oh. But man, bullet for that to be, I remember it. It brought back so many men. Bullet, there's only five of them. I'm telling you, there's only. Uh, well, no, yeah, it's because you can only get six. So there's there's only five. There's only you've got a piece of history, boy. I'm just telling you when they when they uncovered Al Capone, he had that. Mm -hmm. Boy, I'm just telling you. Geraldo, so, did, this Geraldo <laughs> didn't come up in no. the this time. So. Boy, that is so much history because I remember. You know what makes that so special when you look at the screen. The the I don't want to say the cheapness, but I was trying to save money. There's a charm. There's a charm. Yeah. yeah. To it. So I didn't want like a star above my head. I didn't even want. I want all everything to look as cheap because it was cheap. Does that make sense? That's why even in the PWF, there's it, it, the letters are there's no black inside the letters yeah, yeah, yeah. because that was more money. Right oh yeah, if they had to cut out, <laughs> if they <laughs> if they had to cut out that on the screen, it was more money. Yeah. So that's why we just run it together. So it's so like you just put like a white bar. And oh then... boy. Put the black in there. That is so joy. See, that's my arm pad bullet right oh, yeah. here. There's my headband. There's my little uh, few, few, very bulletish uh, 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 Fu Manchu. Fu Manchu bullet. Oh my gosh, bullet. Somebody got all excited when they found like one of your promo pictures from 2004. I'm like, oh yeah, top this. And bullet, listen to this. Top this. Hey, and here's another little trivia. The reason, guess what? Gorgeous George, Jimmy Garvin. Gave me that. Oh, he sure did. Okay. He sure All did. Right. And right. as you know, I've got one of his. That's why I mean him so close to this day. He, of course, I was going to use it anyway. You also but, might be close geographically. He but, still lives around here. But listen, he gave me the blessing to use gorgeous George South. And and because he had given me one of his black, uh, the black tail jacket that he wore uh, in AWA when him and Steve Regal were tagging. He gave me that jacket to wear at my shows. And for some reason, it never got returned. Uh, to him, uh, but uh, he gave me that blessing. So much history with just a flick uh, of the wrist, bullet. Thank you for that. I, that I, how that was kept like that, bullet. It should be a little favorite. It's not. It's no, and, and and what's so funny, bullet? The tags used to aggravate the tar. Yeah, you, know, you can get a t-shirt without the tag, yeah, yeah. but the tags used to aggravate the crap out of me mm -hmm. uh, in the back of it. So anyway, so much bullet going but on. I'm just to let you cut the bottom, okay? <laughs> I know you like. Boy, remember that? Yes, I got to look. No, it, it's, it's got the still bottom. on there. It's still, okay. it's st the bottom seam Folks, is still on there. That's why I can tell you that's an expensive shirt because it's still got you, the you seam on You get your hands on so you're not touching it. You're uh, not cutting this. Uh, Boy, real quick before we go, idiot of the week, <laughs> believe it or not, you'd think we'd already mentioned a hundred of them. Uh, Bullet Strawberry Festival, real quick, I just mentioned, here's how stupid people are. There is a, uh, a man that I know his history. I, 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 we're not friends on Facebook or anything like that. I know, uh, uh, and just little stuff that he's done to people. In other words, he's he had a friend of ours uh, buy a belt, uh, a replica belt. Uh, in other words, uh, our friend gave him the money, this gentleman I'm talking about, uh, to get the belt, and he took 100 bucks, and he didn't pay for it. Mm -hmm. In other words, he, 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 he got the belt, but he never gave the belt to the guy with the money and mm -hmm. never gave back the money. That's just one thing. And there have been s several stuff over the years that this – this one piece of crap guy has done. Well, anyway, uh, uh, the reason I'm sharing this, guess what? Guess who comes up to my gimmick table at the Strawberry Festival? Is this 
guy, mm -hmm. okay? With, and, and I know his history. I know, just get away from me, okay? Mm -hmm. So he comes up with his girlfriend or wife, whatever, and he's standing there. He doesn't say, hey, he doesn't say nothing. He's just standing there waiting on me to acknowledge him first, okay? I'm not going to acknowledge him because I think you're an idiot, okay? Really, boy, that's per se idiot of the week. But anyway, boy, so listen, I don't say nothing. I walk right by him, okay? Because I know this guy's history. He cheated our, uh, cheated our friend uh, out of the belt. He didn't give the money back. Uh, this is years ago. And he's done several things over the years. Just just sleaze bag. Boy. Anyway, so anyway. We don't know what you're talking about. We're going to have to do this off camera. Oh, yes. Yes. So he comes to my table, uh, Bullet, and I uh, uh, didn't acknowledge I walk off. So guess what? The next day, now, even though his history is just trash, mm -hmm. he, he's just trash. Next, guess what? He says on Facebook, I thought we were a friend, uh, you big jerk. So, end of story, I accomplished, I want to be a jerk to him. I don't want to, anyway, it's just, so I'm throwing that idiot in the idiot bag bullet, just uh, that he even thinks that I care, but it's just mind boggling with his history, and I know for a fact stuff that he's done. He's not a friend of mine, I could care less if I ever see him again, but he came right up to my table. I guess he's gonna show me all, you know, to his girl. You know, he's, he's my buddy. What town is he you living know? in? Because I think I don't know. Uh, Rock Hillish, Pagelinish. Okay. You, you have met him before. Oh, I know, so, I know. okay. I got uh, a good idea. But, uh, Anyway, and then of course he gets on his you know Facebook like everybody else, and he says, hey, yeah, "I thought we were friends. We were never friends, not for years." But he calls me a jerk. So anyway, throw him in the idiot bag, bullet. So and get rid of him. Uh, good rhythms. I'm glad I am a idiot to him. So anyway, uh, we're going to put uh, the new gorgeous George T-shirt uh, on, on the drawing. We'll yeah, we'll, 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 we'll put it bag. up. We'll tip it over. Rainbow. Oh boy, I cry every time. So anyway, folks, listen to me. I know if this episode makes you cry, that's a good thing. You can teach me how at the wedding. But if not, purchase the second greatest book of all time, which will make you tear up. <laughs> but don't worry, we're going to put each one of these in a box from highspots.com with a tear in our eye, just like Ric Flair. And also, too, <laughs> if you want to see somebody go crazy on Twitter, just like Ric Flair, make sure you follow me on Twitter, at Manscout Manning, or on Instagram, at Manscout Manning. This Good has been job. another edition of Dad, You Don't Work, You Rest. Good show. Boy. Marathon edition, Tommy Thomas. Oh, let's see what we did. Oh, we did like 50 minutes, George. Oh, boy. <laughs> <laughs> we got to, oh, I love that, Stanley. We got to compete with Avengers. Yeah, I am oh. George South. Oh, I love that, boy.